ChatGPT, OpenAI, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion are just some of the cutting edge AI technologies that we're starting to see pop up. You've probably heard about all of these platforms already, and that's because people are already making a profit on AI. And I have a feeling that this is going to be a much, much larger opportunity than the whole crypto NFT phase that we just went through. That's because anybody can access these tools in a matter of minutes. And it's not going to be long before AI is writing entire NFT and crypto projects just from a single prompt. It'll be generating videos using recreated voices, highly sophisticated 3D renders, and even deep fakes, or making entire playable games off of a single prompt. It's not quite there yet, but people are making a profit on AI today. Getting in early and learning the basics is the best thing that we can do right now if we wanna take advantage of this new industry. Today, I'm going to talk about what I've been able to do with AI, case studies for what other people are doing with AI, and we'll talk about how we can use it to make money, and hopefully you'll be able to get your foot in the door so you can take advantage of this huge new wave. I have three new ideas that I haven't really seen anyone talk about, so let's get right into it. The main two AI that I'm going to reference in this video are Midjourney and ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a chatbot that you can talk with like a human, and it'll basically uh, spit out anything you ask it for. So if you want a story, if you want code, if you want to write you an application, it can pretty much do all of that. Midjourney is like the photo version, and so you give it a prompt and it'll try its best to generate an image based on the prompt you give it. So we'll get into each of these a little bit more, but for now, you just have to know that these are the two platforms I'm gonna be talking about. So I have my chat GPT opened right here, as you can see, and essentially we're just going to be working with it and you can type the prompt at the bottom and once you hit enter, in real time, it'll write out its answer for you. Now we could use ChatGPT to write us an entire book. The book industry is one of the biggest industries to be in and we could have ChatGPT probably write us an entire story, but I think that that would take quite a while, especially considering you'd have to sit there and read the entire book and edit it and make sure that it's not copywritten or anything like that. But what about a children's book? I think that this, because it's short and sweet, is a much better opportunity and we can use Midjourney to create all of the images for it so it's a complete product. So let me show you an example that I thought of that we could potentially use to make some money. In my chat GPT, all I'm gonna do is write out the prompt and you can see I've just written, write me a children's book about the alphabet where each letter is an animal. And so I'm gonna hit submit and in real time, you'll see it's gonna think about it for a second and then hopefully it'll spit us out an answer. But the really unique and what I think is the coolest feature about ChatGPT is you can talk with it and you can tell it to rewrite the story in a different method. And so what's great about that is we can actually get multiple stories from the same idea. And you can see that this is actually quite a detailed version of the book. And so it's going through each letter and it's writing out like even a little story kind of around each character. N is for Ninja, who's fast and sly, silent in the shadow, and always on the fly. And this is really good because this is already rhyming. So I was actually planning on asking the AI to uh, go in and make it rhyme, but it's actually doing that for us. And this is insane. Like X is for X-ray fish who lives in the deep. With its see-through skin, it's a unique creep. Like, dude, that's pretty good. Honestly, this is a really really enticing story. So what we would have to do is we would have to check and make sure that none of this is uh, pre-existing material because it is you know, an AI that collects data from the internet. So we'd have to make sure that we're not copying anyone's story directly. Uh, but from here, like we already have a great template for a story. And um, I'm actually probably just going to end up using this. But what we could do is we could tell it like, uh, make it shorter and funny. And so what it'll do is after that prompt, it's going to uh, make a funnier version. Um, and so there you go. A is for alligator who's always on the munch. Uh, he loves to chomp anything for lunch. And so you can see it's doing it again. And it's, uh, it's, it didn't make it, it's not making it shorter, but it is making it a little bit funnier. Um, and that's pretty impressive. And so now literally from one idea, we've gotten two books out of it. Um, and so while this is writing out, let's see if we can get some images out of it. So all of that was done in chat GPT, but now let's hop over to Midjourney to see if we can generate some images. If you're unfamiliar with Midjourney, you can go to their website and sign up and you'll need a Discord account to use the chat. It is free to use Midjourney and you can download Discord and practice before you pay anything. But if you do want to generate images in a private chat so all of the other users can't see what you're generating and you want commercial rights to your images, 
I believe it's about 20 to $50 a month, depending on the package you choose. So once you're in Discord, you'll see this little chat bot down below. And once you've entered the mid journey chat bot, what we can do is hit the forward slash key and you'll see it gives us a list of commands and we just wanna hit the imagine command. And this is where we're going to type our prompt. Just coming back into our story, let's pick a character that we want to generate. So I kind of like the idea of a penguin right here. So we're gonna do a penguin and we just have to make sure uh, it looks like a cold scene. So in our mid journey, I'm going to put a, uh, a cute baby penguin because I think that'll do better for our story. And then we're gonna, just gonna do a comma and a uh, cartoon version. So I just put a comma and then write cartoon. And when I hit enter, um, it's going to start generating that image and it should take about a minute. So from here, we absolutely have some usable options. These are super cute. Um, and then if we wanted to upscale one, we could uh, just pick one of the penguins and this is number one. So top left is gonna be number one, and then number two, number three, and number four. So if we wanted to upscale, uh, let's say number two, we would just hit uh, U2 and that's going to go ahead and upscale number two. And so right here, you can see it finally finished upscaling this one. And this is a much higher resolution image of the same penguin. Uh, that we could use for our Amazon KDP or our ebook or whatever um, for the penguin page. This is another example of an image that I generated. It was just a cute baby panda um, in a bamboo forest. And this would be a great one for a panda. And so you can play around and get a bunch of different styles depending on what style your book is going for. So if you want more of a kind of hand-drawn cartoony feel, you could absolutely do that. If you want a realistic kind of cute cartoony uh, render feel like this is honestly really really good then what we would have to do is we would have to just take these put them in a creative font on top of our image and basically you have a book done so then i can go back into chat gpt and i can ask it to give me a title tags and seo field description for the book and hopefully you'll see right here so it gives me a title the animal alphabet a fun a fun and funny abc book for the kids then it gives me some tags. And then right here, it's literally printing out a description that I could use in the product listing. So this basically takes all of the work out of having to, I mean, do any of this. It's And it's taking the best information that it can find and it's condensing it down into a description, title and tags for the book that it just wrote. Like this is pretty overpowered in my opinion. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense how you can use ChatGPT and mid-journey to create children's books. I think children's books would be much easier than real books just because of the uh, time input that you have to use. And I actually just found this out. I also asked the chatbot how big the children's book industry was. And as you can see, it gave me essentially a detailed report. Um, it does about 25% of trade book sales and it's projected to be a $10.4 billion industry. So while this isn't the most glamorous AI business that you could do, like this obviously could make you a ton of money if you dedicate some time to actually doing it. $10.4 billion industry is a massive industry, and that means you wouldn't even need a very large percentage of that market share to make quite a decent profit. Digital products and print on demand are what I'm most familiar with, and it's where I've made most of my money. So I wanna show you a shop that's selling about $400,000 worth of digital products a year, and how you could use AI to get a very similar result. Okay, now for this one, it's an Etsy shop, and it's called North Prints. And you can see they've done almost 260,000 sales. If we assume that they've done $3 for 260,000, well, let's calculate that out. We'll just put the amount of sales in, and we will multiply that by $3. And you can see that that is about $780,000. But if we visit their page and we come all the way down to the bottom, you can see that they've been on Etsy since about 2020. And they actually got their first review on August 12th of 2020. So they've been selling their digital products online since August 12th of 2020. So they've done that amount of revenue in about two years and five months. But some of their best selling products go for eight, nine, and $10 each, which leads me to believe that this shop has done well over a million dollars in that same time frame. But the thing that really caught my eye about this shop is the artwork. So if we take a look at a painting like this, for example, you can see it's just a neutral landscape drawing wall art, and it's a digital download. Digital downloads also mean that it's almost a 100% profit margin minus the Etsy fees. So you can see it's just a fairly standard sketch of just some bushes and a tree. So naturally, I jumped into Mid Journey to see if I could create something similar. And as you can see right here, I just put in neutral 
a vintage neutral winter tree sketch. And honestly, this came out pretty good. This is just a super high quality, high resolution version of a uh, of a sketched tree. And this is just the mid journey interpretation. In my opinion, this is a super comparable image to what that shop North Prince was selling. And this entire image was generated in less than two minutes, just from putting in this prompt and upscaling it and then upscaling it to the beta size so that it's big enough to sell online. Now, I really have no way of knowing if these images are AI art or not, but it's very possible that they are. But even if this shop isn't selling AI art, we can get very similar results using Midjourney. Here are some more examples of some pieces of art that I created in Midjourney that only took a few minutes each. And after upscaling them to the beta size, they still maintained all their quality and they look excellent. There's honestly so much that you could do here. The real limit is just your imagination on what you can create. Again, if I pull this image up, you can see super high quality, a ton of detail, and they've even gotten all of the reflection in the water. Like this is a great print and you could probably sell this on Etsy. We could still utilize ChatGPT and we could ask it for a title, description, and SEO tags for our image. And you can see in real time, it's going to print that out for us. And then we can use these details as our listing details wherever we're selling it online. You can see it just finished up. We have a full description and a title and tags that we could use in our listing. Now that's all great, but maybe you don't want to make a nearly 100% profit margin and you do want to sell print on demand products. Well, you could do that as well. You could sell these same images on products like posters, canvases, phone cases, mugs, or pretty much anything you can find on Printify. So for example, if we come to Printify and we uh, take a look at their catalog, we're gonna scroll down and find the home and living section. And from here we can choose posters and let's create a vertical poster. And we just hit start designing. I'm just going to choose that tree file that we have already created in Midjourney. I just downloaded it off of the web and we're going to wait for it to upload. Great, and from here we can see it doesn't quite fit. So we're going to just scale it up a little bit. And you can see, honestly, that looks pretty great. And so if we check the preview, you can see right here, like we have this image that we just created in Midjourney and we already have a bunch of mockups. It looks wonderful. And I don't see any reason why uh, an image like this wouldn't sell online. And again, just for the comparison, um, ours obviously is a different color tone, but there isn't much difference between these two images. So there you go. You could also take this same art and if you didn't feel like marketing it and selling it all yourself, you could upload it to platforms like Redbubble, Society6, Teespring, and let them do all of the marketing for you and you'll just sit back and collect all the sales. Another idea is if you're creating children's books like we talked about before and you have cartoon images similar to these, well, you can take these same images, remove the backgrounds using Photoshop and sell these as stickers on a platform like Etsy or Creative Market as well. There's no reason why you can't just repurpose all your artwork for different projects. Now, the barrier to entry for coding has dropped literally down to your ankles. I was inspired because I just watched this video by Ben Bonk, where he essentially creates an entire video game through ChatGPT. He uses ChatGPT to make an entire playable game with real game mechanics. It lets him control his little player square, which even has a little attached weapon that shoots projectiles. There's enemy cubes, and it was all done in ChatGPT. When he goes about developing the game, the chatbot explains exactly how to implement everything, and it's like a step-by-step -step guide specifically for what he's trying to create. It's super cool, and I'd highly recommend watching his video. I'll leave a link down in the description. But how could we make money from this? Besides things like Fiverr gigs, which I think is kind of the obvious answer, we could make a lot of money by coding different programs or games. But I wanted to put this to the test for myself, so I asked the ChatGPT to see if it could code a game specifically for me. So before I show you that, just know that I have no game coding experience whatsoever, and I am a complete noob but I do have Python installed on my computer, and so I do know how to at least copy and paste the code and get it to run. But besides games, eventually, I bet you'll be able to use ChatGPT to create entire iPhone apps, chatbots, and various software that you could implement with websites, overall, a bunch of utility across the web, and it's really limited to your creativity. But we are going to uh, see if we can get this to work. So, um, okay, we're gonna see if this works for the Pong game in Python, okay? And it's literally writing out code right before my eyes, dude. This is insane. I'm going to speed this part up. I was basically really impressed with how fast it was coding the entire game from scratch. 
and giving me detailed instructions on how to build it. Okay, so I am in a VS code, which is a, I believe where I need to put this, and I've created the pong.py, which I think is right. Uh, we are going to copy and paste the code and see if this works. So I'm going to copy the code, come right in here and paste it, and it looks like everything's working. So we are going to save, and here goes the moment of truth, dude. Oh my gosh, okay, this came up on my other screen. Okay, it doesn't really work, but it did uh, It did start, so let me see. All right, let me try it one more time. See, this is where it starts, but then I don't know how to move it, so we need to ask it for controls. All right, and then I have to grab it off of my other monitor. Let's see, W. Okay, so this up, up, ups that one. So we're halfway to a fully functioning game, but even after I asked it for the first controls, it completely left out the right side. So I had to add controls for the right side. You can see right before my eyes, it is coding out an entire game. We didn't have the functionality uh, to actually play the game, which was a little bit silly, but all I had to do was ask it and it told me exactly how to, how to do it. Oh my gosh, I think it's working. <laughs> we have a fully working version of Pong and I am currently playing it uh, in my computer. And this took me less than 10 minutes to do. And right now I'm using the W and S keys as it told me to, and then the up and down arrow keys uh, to control. So it's not an AI bot, but uh, that I'm playing against and the ball is extremely slow. All right, so let's let's kill it and let's see if I can make the ball go faster. I tried adding a reset button and faster ball movement, but I didn't end up finishing that and in total, I only spent about 13 minutes on the game. Obviously, I think I could sit here for a while and uh, code more of the Pong game, but for the proof of concept, I think that is, uh, I think we've seen enough. I coded that entire game now granted, I already had Python installed and I did know how to copy and paste code into VS Code, but that's about the extent of my knowledge. So uh, as far as any technical coding, ChatGPT did all of the heavy work for me. So there's no reason why you couldn't take this and make more advanced games especially as it becomes smarter and smarter. All right, I know we went over a lot of information today, but I really believe that there's a ton of money to be made in this industry. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.